pizza, one of the most influential foods in American history. Originating in Italy, or more specifically, Naples, as an adaptation of the historical flatbread, pizza was a dish eaten mainly by the commoners as a street food due to its low cost and portability. According to a popular legend, in 1889, King Umberto I and his beautiful wife, Queen Margarita of Savoy, made a visit to Naples. The most famous pizza maker in Naples, Rafael Esposito, was commissioned to create three different pizzas. The Queen did not like the first two pizzas, but the third attempt, consisting of tomato sauce, mozzarella, and basil, resembled the Italian flag and was a hit with the Queen. Thereafter, this pizza has been dubbed the Margarita. In the early 1900s, there was a wave of Italian immigration to the United States, in particular to the northeastern region of the country. The first pizzeria in the United States is credited as Lombardi's Pizza, opened by Gennaro Lombardi in 1905. However, it was discovered that Lombardi's was already a pizzeria before Gennaro Lombardi purchased it from Filippo Malone, an Italian entrepreneur. Lombardi's is still located in the Little Italy section of Manhattan in New York City. Gennaro Lombardi is credited with the development of the New York style pizza. It is said that during World War II, American troops developed a taste for pizza while stationing in Europe. This led to popularity for the dish back home in America after the troops returned, increasing pizza's demand. In 1943, Ike Sewell opened Pizzeria Uno in Chicago, Illinois, and developed a new take on pizza, the deep dish which is cooked in a larger pan with a buttery dough. Founded in 1954 by Sherwood Shakey Johnson and Ed Plummer, Shakey's Pizza was the first franchise pizza chain in the United States. Shakey personally played Dixieland jazz piano to entertain patrons. His nickname resulted from nerve damage following a bout of malaria suffered during World War II. In 1955, Chef Boyardee started to offer boxed pizza kits, which contained everything you needed to make a pizza at home. The pizza kit contained a small packet of parsley, a can of tomato sauce, some yeast and flour, and a packet of Parmesan cheese, no mozzarella. Kits containing sausage and pepperoni included meat inside the can of sauce. In 1958, two brothers, Dan and Frank Carney, borrowed $600 from their mother to open a pizza restaurant in Wichita, Kansas. They named it Pizza Hut because their sign only had room for eight letters. Six months after their launch, they later opened a second restaurant and within a year they had six Pizza Hut restaurants. In the same pivotal year, Pizza Inn was founded by two brothers 
Francis and Leon Spillman, also in Wichita, Kansas. We used to go to a place called the Wishbone Bar and Grill in Wichita, Kansas, on 2nd Street. The owner was from New York City. He had deck ovens in the back kitchen. He let us make pizzas there and didn't charge us for them. So we would go in there about twice a week and make pizzas. Then in 1958, I went over to visit a friend of mine. He managed the second pizza hut that was open. I told him that I was thinking about opening a steakhouse. He said, no, you ought to open a pizza place. He said, we got Pepsi-Cola to buy all the refrigeration, and they paid for the sign. <clears throat> and we bought this pizza oven, and we remodeled it, and we only paid $400 for it. You could get in the pizza business a whole lot cheaper. And we're doing extremely well. My uh, brother Joe, my brother Leon, and my dad are doing a small uh, carryout with a few tables into a little storefront in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, we didn't have much equipment. We had an old baker's pride oven. Uh, we had no dough mixer, we had no dough roller, and we had no slicer or shredder. Um, so we started out making dough by hand, rolling it uh, with a rolling pin, uh, cutting our cheese with a little hand slicer, uh, and rolling up the uh, crust with a uh, rolling pin. And we did that for about a year. And then my brother, who at that time was selling insurance, uh, had a friend that moved to Dallas. And he was telling him that there were no pizza places in Dallas. So at the time, in Wichita, Pizza Hut had started and they had stores all over the city. And surprisingly enough, uh, Brother Joe and Brother Leon all went to school with the boys that started Pizza Hut. Uh, so we went to Dallas. We uh, put in a store uh, across from the Dr. Pepper plant, which was close to SMU. And the biggest uh, pizza place which was an Italian restaurant called Campisi's. And they were so busy that when we started out, we got all their overflow. Uh, and so we were able to get started doing that. Uh, meanwhile, my brother Leon uh, moved to Dallas. I was still in high school and brother Joe was still selling insurance in Wichita. So we did that store and it took us a while, but you know, we were able to uh, make some money and do fairly well. And so we put in a second store. And by that time, I had graduated from high school and I had moved to Dallas and I went to work for my brothers full time. The global chain that Little Caesars is today began with a blind date between Mike Eilich and Marion Bayoff that was arranged by Mike's father in 1954. Within just a matter of months, the couple was married. In 1959, Mike and Marion invested their life savings into their first pizza store in Garden City, Michigan, a suburb of Detroit. Marion carefully recorded Little Caesar's very first sales in a spiral notebook. In 1960, another pair of brothers, Tom and James Monaghan, purchased a pizza restaurant called Dominic's in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Five years later, Tom bought his brother's share of the business with a Volkswagen Beetle. By 1965, Tom owned three pizza locations and changed the name to Domino's. Domino's Pizza supercharged the pizza delivery market and many pizza chains soon followed. In the early 1960s, Pizza Hut expanded and in 1966, when the number of Pizza Hut franchise units had grown to 145, they established a home business office in Wichita. Two years later, the first Pizza Hut franchise opened in Canada. Meanwhile, Pizza Hut's greatest competitor at the time, Pizza Inn, 
made their move to Dallas, Texas. Uh, we closed up the store in Wichita, and so within about a year or two, the whole family was there, and so we, uh, we kind of started that way, and we went from one store, and then we put in another store, and pretty soon, I think we had four or five stores in the Dallas area, and this was around 61, 62, and that's pretty much how we got started, and from then on, we just kept building and putting in more restaurants and more restaurants and continued from there. Kingston was a leader at the time. In 1963, we bought the first uh, pizza dough roller. We paid $600 for it. Today's market, they're $4,500. We also did the first pizza coupon and the business was overwhelming. We had to cut back on the offers. And then in 1964, we came out with the pizza buffet, which was a huge success. We tested the first fast cook pizza oven, which would cook a pizza in six minutes, rather than the deck ovens that took 12 minutes. We opened uh, several stores and we started off with the fast cook ovens. It was two years later before any other pizza chains put in fast cook pizza ovens. Pizza Hut was the main competitor. Uh, later on, there was a lot of small pizza chains, Pizza Planet, which went to Oklahoma City, Ken's Pizza, and then there was Domino's that later years uh, started the delivery business. And the owner of Domino's bought the baseball team in Detroit, and everybody wanted to know how he got the money because he paid $25 million for it. When Pizza Hut saw that, they started investigating the delivery business. That's when Pizza Hut rolled out the, the delivery business. Also, Pizza Inn, we put in a, a nice high decor uh, restaurant in Dallas. Uh, Dan Carney, one of the partners of Pizza Hut, came in and said that was the best looking pizza restaurant he'd ever seen. He went back to Wichita. That's when they designed the the Pizza Hut Red Roof building. Well, we had our own insurance company and we had uh, big success with that because we had very few losses. <coughs> Norco, we uh, sold all the franchisees and the company stores and it was a it was a big success. In 1962, we opened a commissary. We had two full-time employees, and they spent all day uh, cooking uh, pizza toppings. We had a delivery person that delivered it. In 1965, we leased a larger building and uh, call it quality sausage and to make pepperoni and cook the pizza topping. We had uh, two 750-pound uh, pressure cookers to cook the pizza topping and smoke houses to do the pepperoni. In 1962, Little Caesars opened their first franchise restaurant in Warren, Michigan. Five years later, their first restaurant opened in Detroit, Michigan. In 1969, Little Caesars celebrated the opening of its 50th restaurant and also the opening of its first store in Canada. This is a Domino's pizza store, a store of pizza specialists. Pizza is the only thing Domino's Pizza makes and enables them to do it right. Starting with the freshest ingredients, nothing is ever frozen, dehydrated, processed, or powdered. It's a wholesome, nutritious meal in itself. For hot, 
friendly, fast delivery. Call Domino's Pizza. Check your Yellow Pages directory for the Domino's Pizza store near you, limited delivery area. In the 1970s, Domino's Pizza continued to expand, and by 1978, Domino's opened 200 stores. We have the sauce, and the secret is to fight it properly to prevent discovery by unauthorized cooking. And you notice that Pete thought they put the sauce on with a ladle, not a pea brush, so there's plenty of thick, rich, spicy tomato flavor in every pizza. Now comes the part where we hide the sauce with creamy mozzarella cheese, laid edge to edge to cover the whole surface of the pie. Now the further conceal, the goodness under the cheese, some pepperoni cup. You can put a topping of your own choice. Now, soon, it's ready to come out of the oven. Soon, it's ready to come out of the oven. And while you're hanging around the pizza hut waiting for your pizza to cook, you'll notice the atmosphere is like a big cozy den. So mayhap you would while away the moments with a tasty libation of your choice. Ah, yes? Delicious. Pizza Hut. We serve more pizza than anyone else in the world. Check your phone book for the hut nearest you. In 1970, Pizza Hut opened stores in Munich, Germany and Sydney, Australia. The next year, Pizza Hut became the world's largest pizza chain with over 1,000 units total. In 1973, Pizza Hut expanded further by opening stores in Japan and Great Britain. We've got a feeling you're going to like Pizza Inn's $1.99 Tuesday night buffet. Every Tuesday night, we serve our delicious hot pizza buffet style with lots of different toppings to choose from. Enjoy all the hot pizza and garden fresh salad you can eat for only $1.99. So come on in to Pizza Inn every Tuesday night from 6 to 8.30 p.m. By 1970, Pizza Inn owned approximately 100 restaurants while franchising another 125. Annual revenues topped 50 million in 1976 and 100 million by 1978, while net profits ranged from 1.7 million to 2.3 million. The number of new restaurant openings also kept pace so that by the end of the decade, Pizza Inn, which totaled 745 units, was second only to Pizza Hut among U.S. pizza restaurant chains. Pizza Inn had restaurants in Mexico, Puerto Rico, Japan, the Philippines, and South Africa. Let's see, I was with the company from 1960 to 1972, I believe. Um, so, in 1972, I opened up my first restaurant and uh, Duncanville, and it was a huge success. Uh, I was able to have my friends in there, and they helped me, and that first month that we were open, we actually made $5,000 profit, and that was a lot of money in 1972. And with that, I was able to do other things and put in more restaurants, and uh, so that's my personal history involved with it. And unfortunately, the second restaurant I put in, we did okay, but the third restaurant we built, and unfortunately they were redoing the road. And so whatever money we made in the first two restaurants, we pretty much lost in the third restaurant. Um, but that seems to be the way it goes sometimes. In 1973, the first six pizza ends opened in Japan. In 1974, I flew to Japan to meet with the franchisee in Japan. In 1975, they asked us to develop a fast food pizza operation. We developed a fast food pizza operation. It was an individual pizza. It was pre-baked and had, uh, we uh, baked it for an additional two minutes, put it on a hot shelf, People would walk in the front door, they'd go to the counter, we'd hand them a personal pizza. It worked out great. In 1977, 
we opened at Pizza Inn, Pizza Buffet in Okinawa, Japan. It was a 24 hour <coughs> operation. It did uh, $53,000 a week on today's market and prices that would be $125,000 a week. It was very successful. We uh, were really pleased with the operation in Japan. In 1975, the Japanese gave Pizza an award for the best new food service operation. Little Caesars purchased a mushroom farm in 1971 to improve mushroom quality and pricing. Little Caesars Mushroom Farms Incorporated ultimately expanded to become Little Caesars' primary full-service distribution company known today as Blue Line Food Service Distribution. Also in 1971, Little Caesars began offering their two-for-one concept, Pizza Pizza, which became a permanent feature of the company's marketing campaign. The 1970s also brought us Godfather's Pizza, which was founded in Omaha, Nebraska in 1973. William M. Thiessen's Omaha Beer Parlor, Wild Willie's, was booming business with the pizza place next door. Through a passageway between the two establishments, bar patrons were able to order pizza to go with their beer. Soon, he and his neighbor joined forces to form Godfather's Pizza. Chuck E. Cheese is an American family entertainment center and pizza restaurant chain founded in 1977 by Atari's co-founder, Nolan Bushnell. The first location opened as Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater in San Jose, California. Chuck E. Cheese was the first family restaurant to integrate food with arcade games and animatronic entertainment. Pizza hit pop culture in the 1980s, gracing such media from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to movies like Spaceballs and Mystic Pizza. In three stages at Showbiz Pizza Place, the Rock of Fire Explosion. Some of the kids in the room as well. Fresh baked pizza made to order. Over 60 new games and rides. We have it all at Showbiz Pizza Place. In 1980, a competitor to Chuck E. Cheese appeared, Showbiz Pizza Place. Founded by Robert L. Brock and Creative Engineering, it emerged after a separation between Brock and the owners of the Chuck E. Cheese franchise, Pizza Time Theater. Showbiz Pizza offered arcade games, coin-operated rides, and animatronic stage shows. You're home. You 
can enjoy the fresh baked quality from Domino's Pizza or take your chances with the Noid. You can have pizza made to your order or you can count on our famous 30 minute delivery or you can taste the quality from Domino's Pizza and so avoid the Noid. Domino's Pizza delivers. In 1983, Domino's opened its first international store in Winnipeg, Canada, and also opened its first store outside of North America in Queensland, Australia. Domino's ad campaign, Avoid the Noid, appeared in 1986 as an anti-hero. In 1989, the 5,000th Domino's store in the world opened. What makes a Pizza Hut pan pizza so good? It's a pan full of homemade taste. Made fresh with dough we raised twice. Baked in a pan with a light crispy crust. Dripping with pure mozzarella cheese. And your favorite toppings. There's only one place you can get a pan pizza this good. Your hometown Pizza Hut restaurant. To raise their profile, Pizza Hut introduced Pan Pizza in 1980, followed by the Personal Pan Pizza in 1983. In 1984, Stephen Reinemann was appointed President and Chief Executive Officer of Pizza Hut. He oversaw a period of unprecedented growth for the pizza chain. In 1986, Pizza Hut opened its 5,000th franchise unit in Dallas, Texas, and began its successful pizza delivery service. I'm Frankie Avalon from Pizza Inn. If you're a pizza lover like I am, you'll love their original thin crust pizza. And tonight, after 9 p.m., we're offering a medium original thin crust pizza with your choice of one topping for just $5.50. Come in or call ahead to your favorite Pizza Inn. Tonight's your night for an original thin crust pizza from Pizza Inn. They're quality people serving quality pizza for 25 years. For Pizza Out, it's Pizza Inn. Pizza Inn continued to flourish and remained a competitive brand. By the 1980s, there were nearly 800 Pizza Inns in the United States. We were the leaders at the time. We had uh, popular wrestlers in Dallas called the Von Eric Brothers. There was three of them. We did posters on them. We did uh, buy a large pizza and you get a free poster of one of the wrestlers. <clears throat> we sold over one million pizzas and passed out over one million posters. That's, that was in Texas only. My brothers taught me about wrestling, but I taught them about eating. So we brought us to pizza and it's all you can eat buffet. You get hot, fresh pizza, thin crust or pan. Plus, there's plenty of spaghetti, garlic toast, and a salad bar, all for a super low price. Now, when you buy any small, medium, or large pizza, you'll get a 20 by 28 color poster of your favorite Bon Eric. This week's poster features all three Bon Eric's. Collect all four. More pizza out and pizza in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pizza came out with a pan pizza and increased their business <clears throat> by 20%. We also came out with a pan pizza, then a New York pan, and uh, a lot of other new products. We're here to show you the world at Pizza Ant. When it comes to original thin crust pizza, nothing can be the except cheese and pan pizza. Come on, you guys, go to the draw. With the all you can eat buffet, you can always go back to more. And all the pizza, salad, and muffins you can handle, made with the freshest ingredients for a super low price. I just got your big pink phone for $14.95. Hold on, I'm going to go to the studio. Give me that. Hello? This is Lisa. Hello. We uh, had, we owned the quality sausage company that manufactured all the pepperoni, all the pizza toppings. And we also owned Norco, which was distributed, distribution uh, company. We also owned a cheese company. We also owned our own insurance company, which had over $5 million in cash in it. 
Pizza Inn sold off its meat manufacturing subsidiary, Quality Sausage Company, for $23.7 million. Quality Sausage started with one plant, then opened a second and a third plant, which specializes in pepperoni. The pepperoni plant is currently known as the most modern pepperoni plant in the world. Quality Sausage Company sells to all the major pizza companies. They are projected to sell $600 million in products in 2023. We opened the stores in Mexico, uh, Japan, Hawaii, uh, China, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, and several other uh, companies over there. And we also then went to Europe and opened a store in England. Of the store. We had stores in Japan, we had stores in South Africa, we had stores we were putting in the Philippines, we had stores in the Middle East, uh, we had stores in Mexico, uh, we had some in Puerto Rico, uh, and so on the whole, all of them did fairly well. Uh, the Japanese franchisees had, I think, had built uh, probably maybe eight, ten stores while I was still with the company. Um, I went there in Kyoto and opened up one personally, and so uh, we also went to a few other cities in Japan and uh, looked for locations there. And I think at that time we were, we were doing very well. And uh, I think uh, the proof in that is the fact that when uh, uh, Brother Joe sold the company, um, he did very well financially with it. and that. You know, I mean, the rest is probably history, and, and I'm not sure that anybody really knows why anything happened, but in my opinion, that's pretty much it. In 1987, Pantera's Corp., a St. Louis-based pizza restaurant operation, offered $48 million in cash and stock for the company. With the addition of 120 Pantera restaurants, the new Pizza Inn became the fourth largest overall pizza chain in the country. The debt Pantera's incurred in acquiring Pizza Inn proved overly burdensome, and Pantera's Corp filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1989. Uh, I think the, if I could change the history of it, we wouldn't have sold to the group in St. Louis. Uh, we were a public company at the time, and the stock market did so-so, did fairly good, you know, not great. But I think once these other people got a hold of the company and ran it into the ground, within two years they filed bankruptcy. And keep in mind that at that time we had been operating without running a bankruptcy for 15 years. So to me, in my mind, that was probably the biggest mistake that we made. Oh, best value in America, Little Caesar wanted to thank you personally. Thank you, thank you. Hey, beautiful toga. The entertainment's here. Thank you, thank you. Gladiator. From Little Caesars, two pizzas with 90% more pepperoni, pepperoni, and free crazy bread, all for $6.99. Thank you, thank you. In 1985, the Little Caesars Love Kitchen began traveling the country providing free hot pizza to the hungry and homeless as well as disaster survivors. In 1988, a square deep dish pizza called Pan Pan was added to the Little Caesars menu. Papa John's Pizza was founded in 1984 when Papa, John Schnatter, installed an oven inside a broom closet in the back of his father's tavern, Mixed Lounge, in Jeffersonville, Indiana. He then sold his 1971 Camaro Z28 to purchase $1,600 worth of used pizza equipment and began selling pizzas to the tavern's customers out of the converted closet. His pizzas proved sufficiently popular that a year later he moved into an adjoining space. Dipping sauce specifically for pizza was invented by Papa John's Pizza that same year and has since become popular when eating pizza, especially the crust. 
In 1985, Cece's Pizza opened its doors for the very first time in Plano, Texas. Cece's features a buffet including pizza, salad, pasta, and desserts. After completing concept unification with Chuck E. Cheese, Showbiz Pizza phased out and Chuck E. Cheese Pizza became the exclusive store brand operated by Showbiz Pizza Time. It wasn't until 1998 that Showbiz Pizza Time changed its company name to Chuck E. Cheese Entertainment Incorporated. The next year, Chuck E. Cheese purchased its competitor, Discovery Zone. In 1992, Domino's introduced its breadsticks to the menu, followed by buffalo wings in 1994. In 1995, Domino's entered 40 international markets, including Eastern Europe and Africa, and opened its thousandth international store. In 1994, Pizza Hut became the first national chain to offer pizza delivery by ordering on the internet. In 1995, Pizza Hut launched the original stuffed crust pizza, immediately setting company sales records. Do you really think this is the right thing for us to be doing, Ivana? But you people think. Let them talk. Ivana, 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 Ivana. It's wrong, isn't it? But it feels so right. Then it's a deal? Yes, we eat our pizza the wrong way. Crust first. Introducing stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. With a ring of cheese bacon or totally new thinner crust, you'll want to eat the wrong way. Crust first. No, from the last bite. Actually, you're only entitled to half. <laughs> Surprise fries! Two free prizes for kids! Yeah, now, Little Caesars! Starting in 1997, Little Caesars introduced shaker boards to advertise their hot and ready pizza, a large pepperoni pizza sold for $5. The concept was successful enough to become a permanent fixture of the chain, and Little Caesar's business model shifted to focus more on carryout. So, how long have you been working here? About three weeks now. It's not easy, you know. I know. Everything here has to be so perfect. Uh -huh. Keep up the good work at Baba John's. Thank you. Our mission is to deliver the perfect pizza. In August 1996, the thousandth Papa John's opened for business, and by 1997, the pizza chain had opened 1,500 stores. Papa John's began international expansion by opening units in Puerto Rico and Mexico. As of June 2020, Chuck E. Cheese operates 612 corporate stores as well as 122 Peter Piper Pizza restaurants, which they purchased in 2014. Chuck E. Cheese is located in 47 U.S. states as well as 16 countries and territories around the world. In a simultaneous celebration, in 2006, Domino's opened its 5,000th United States store in Huntley, Illinois, and its 3,000th international store in Panama City, Panama, totaling 8,000 stores. In 2001, Pizza Hut became the first company to deliver to outer space with a pizza delivery to the International Space Station. Due to the rising popularity of chicken wings, Pizza Hut launched its Wing Street restaurants in 2003. Pizza Hut's international presence under Yum! Brands includes Canada, Mexico, Japan, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, China, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, European Union, Qatar, Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea, and Egypt. 
In 2011, Pizza Inn launched the fast casual restaurant Pi 5 Pizza, which specializes in customizable pizzas that are made within five minutes in Fort Worth, Texas. From 2012 to 2016, former PepsiCo and Yum Brands executive Randy Greer served as Pizza Inn's CEO. Between 2008 and 2015, Little Caesars was the fastest growing pizza chain in the United States. As of 2017, the company has 5,463 locations, including United States and international units. Welcome to CC. Step right this way to an incredible world you can gobble buffet. A wondrous world of extraordinary creations like mac and cheese pizza and a cinnamon roll station. Oh. Pasta and salad dessert. Oh my lord, it's games for the kiddos and dudes in their 40s. There's plenty to go around, no need for sharing. Everyone's happy, even this Karen. What will we do next? You can bet it's stupendous. Bring your stretchy pants to CC so the pizza abilities are endless. Consistently adapting to meet the changing needs of its guests, CC's put a stronger focus on its launch of online ordering new menu items, and a loyalty program within the MyCC's app. Today, the brand has more than 300 restaurants. The world of pizza continues to adapt to our needs. Cauliflower Crust has appeared as an alternative for those sensitive to gluten and practitioners of the ketogenic diet, as well as dairy-free cheese. Other advancements are more technological in nature, such as pizza vending machines, pizza making robotics, self-driving pizza delivery cars, and drone pizza delivery. Who knows what innovations may occur in the future for pizza? Today, the top four most successful pizza chains are Domino's, Pizza Hut, Little Caesars, and Papa John's. Domino's tops the list in annual gross sales at over $12.2 billion, while Pizza Hut has the most restaurants at 16,748. There are over 100 pizza chains in the world grossing over $21 million per year. The pizza represents a sense of prosperity and fulfillment, combining flour and geometry, cheese and mathematics. We call it a pizza pie, and the crust emerges at a specific distance connected to this solitary central point. Most importantly, pizza is a form of sustenance that one can share with others. It can be tailor-made to fulfill individual selection from ham and pineapple to pepperoni and sausage. There is magic in the pizza. After all, it is one of the few foods that still tastes amazing the next day whether cold or crisp. If there is anything to remember about the pizza, one thing is for certain. It remains with us as a connection to the past and a vehicle for future generations to both share and individualize and above all, enjoy. <laughs>